Dangerous Toys will be performing live at the Buffalo Rose in Golden on Saturday, June 6th. Uh, tickets and VIP meet and greet packages are on sale now at holdmyticket.com, or you can just visit the Wolfpack Productions Facebook page. So uh, let's go right to the hotline and go on the record with lead vocalist of Dangerous Toys, Mr. Jason McMaster. How are you, Jason? I'm excellent. Thanks for having me today. No, thank you for joining us. It's a, it's a treat to talk to you. Hey, I wanted to ask you about a band, um, a band called Pariah. Uh, now, I, I moved to Denver in 85, and, and all my friends in Texas, uh, they were telling me about this band kind of in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, they got signed to Geffen Records and, and released a debut album in 1993 called To Mock a Killing Bird. And, uh, you know, to me, the record kind of sounds like a darker, faster pussycat. It's, it's hard to put your finger on exactly what they are. Uh, definitely a transitional band from, like, the late 80s hair bands into that different, dare I say, grungy sound of, of the, the early 90s. Uh, unfortunately, that album never found an audience, and, and their bassist, Sims Ellison, tragically committed suicide a few years later, and unfortunately, the, the band, uh, you know, ceased to be at that point. You know, why did Pariah never break big, in your opinion? And, and uh, part of me wanted to ask you also about a rumor I'm hearing that you may be involved with Pariah in some capacity now. Well, to start at the top, uh, Sims was my roommate. I did not know that. Uh, Sims was my roommate. Uh, not to dwell on that sad story. Uh, Jared Sin, as some people might know him, his name's Jared Tootin. He is the producer, my songwriting partner in my band Broken Teeth. The name of Broken Teeth's record label is Killing Bird Records. Gotcha. Yep. So I'm very, very, very involved in, in, in the, where they came from. Pariah opened a thousand shows for Dangerous Toys from San Antonio to Dallas around the time frame that you're talking about. They were, I used to go to their rehearsals in San Antonio. I met those kids when they were, I mean, they're only a few years younger than me, but they were real just excited and spry. This is long before they got their deal. And they were they were based out of San Antonio and when Dangerous Toys would go down there and play, they were front row, totally loving it. Uh we were an inspiration to them. We got our deal and then they got hot for you know, that you know, we, all of a sudden we had a, a a melting pot, you know what I mean. All of a sudden, with their, you know, the the all eyes are on Central Texas for uh, you know the, these hot up and up and coming bands. Wow, Dangerous Toys. Is there anybody else down there? And right. Pariah was it, <clears throat> and they they did end up getting a deal, and that record did come out, and uh, it's a good record. But it is what you you described it about right it was like a mother love bone meets a faster pussy cat or something like that yeah it's hard to put your finger on but uh it, well it, they had changed they had changed their style a little bit because you know the record came out in like 92 and it was two years late it was just late uh pundits even say that the first dangerous toys record should have come out in 87 instead of 89 so it's it's about the same kind of thing because the landscape was changing so fast. Yeah, I've got the Pariah CD in my hand. It's uh, 1993 is when this uh, is stamped. Yeah, they were recording that as as uh, as early only as early as 92. So um, everyone was shocked at it, that it even saw the light of day. Is there any uh, any I've truth that that uh, you may play some live shows with Pariah? No, they actually rehearsed uh, about six weeks ago, two months ago. Uh, I can't, I, that's about right. That's close to right. And um, they know they know that I would, uh, you know, love to help. The, the, the idea was that I would step in on bass and help them that way. But they have a, they have a mutual friend that's, that wasn't really related to anything from back in the day, so to speak that was probably a safer, less emotional tie to play bass. Uh, but they've got, every, it's everybody. It's, it's, it's Dave and Jared and Kyle and Shandon. So it's every, they've got, they had everybody, and then they had their buddy come in and play bass. They even borrowed my bass gear. So 
Nice. I uh, heard it heard it went really really well and it was a lot of fun and and uh, you know Jared told me gave me the skinny on it. Jared said it was a lot of fun and everybody was super happy and so that's it was great. So you know they're they're slowly coming around. There was some of those guys refused to even think about doing it without Sims for years, decade. So you know hard to hard to think about that.